Is your ministry a safe place? And who is even qualified to answer that question? That's what we're going to talk about today on the Ministry Coach Podcast. Hey, Youth Ministry Nation. This is the Ministry Coach Podcast. My name is Jeff Lascola. I'm here with... Kristen Lascola. Coming at you again with another great episode. Today, we are tackling the issue of safety. Yeah, and maybe right off the bat, you're like, boring. (laughs) (laughs) And you might be right. But what we've done is we've broken it down into three categories. So when it comes to safety in your ministry, what does safety mean to a parent? What does safety mean to a student? And what does safety mean to your staff, your leaders? And the reason we're talking about that is because now is a good time to talk about safety. Um, And if you're kind of looking to get back into your building, get your program re-going and restarted. There could be some safety things aside from the whole like health issue, mm-hmm. because every state and church might have to do County, that a little differently. All different. Yeah. Right. And so that changes daily. So this is a new like elbow. Oh, yeah, the elbow yeah. hello. The elbow, the elbow hello. I like that. <laughs> Elbow a low. It has a little ring to it. Um, But we're not going to talk specifically like COVID safety kind of stuff, but maybe just safety is kind of forefront of everyone's mind right now, especially venturing out back into the world. Youth ministers constantly have to balance this three-legged stool. You may have heard me mention that before. And the legs of that stool are parents, students, and staff. And you could look at staff as like actually paid staff that you work alongside or your staff that you work with in your ministry. So volunteers, volunteers, interns, directors, whatever it might be. So that's the capacity we're going to talk about it today. Your volunteers, your interns, all that. So in each of those categories, what does safety mean to them and how as leaders can we meet them there and deliver that need, um, to feel comfortable Mm -hmm. and, and how does that fall on us? So you know, just thinking through a few different categories, um, I thought we really need to make sure that our programs are safe physically, safe spiritually, and safe socially. And um, so first, we're going to talk about parents because that is the longest category for me <laughs> on this. And maybe that's because I I just have a natural bent toward parent ministry. Mm-hmm. I don't really know why that is. Um, and I feel like even when I was a really young youth pastor, like when I first started, when I was like 21, 22, like I still was that way. I just Mm. have this natural bent toward looking out for the parents' best interest. You mean? Right. Okay. And maybe it's because I've worked with middle schoolers and you need the parent buy-in, but I've always, you know, been very keen on paying attention to what makes a parent like let their guard down Mm. and really I mean, when you're, when the parents are a big fan of yours, you can go, you can go far. It's, it's amazing what it's like to have a very supportive parent network. So number one, we're going to just talk about some tangible things, like not get into super like theoretical, like what does safety mean? But like, literally (laughs) this is safety to a parent. Like this is what it looks like. This is what they want to show up and see. And I hope that you'll be able to check some of these off your list. Like, yeah, we totally do that. Other ones, you might be like, shoot, I like never even thought of that. Like, Mm -hmm. is that even important? So, and you can figure out based on your size and context, what works for you and what doesn't. But so number one, number one, (laughs) band-aids kind of, well, (laughs) we'll get into the whole medical thing, but right when a parent pulls up into the church parking lot on your youth group night, they want to see evidence of your kid being taken care of. And so what that looks like initially, I don't know if you've ever heard the phrase street to seat experience, but we're going to start on the street, literally of what they see to let them know, like, this is a legit place, not run by a bunch of monkeys Mm -hmm. who just are like, Hey, I don't know. We just play games on Tuesday nights, but how do they know pulling into the parking lot before they even see you meet you, whatever that like, okay, I feel good about this place. And this is all based on feedback too, that I've gotten from parents. So, um, to see staff, security, or parking, adults, 
in the parking lot as they arrive. So you so may- they're not dropping their child off to a bunch of other kids running around. Yes. And or going crazy. an empty, like, cause sometimes people go straight oh, inside yeah. and then there's nobody out there. So there needs to be someone in a marked uniform of some sort, whether that's a safety vest, whether that's a security shirt, whether that's a leader with a lanyard or a flashlight or an earpiece and a radio, something that lets them know this is an adult and this is someone who works here. And this is someone who knows what they're doing. It makes it just look official. Like there's someone out here. So when my ministry had been in different sizes, I had different, like when I was really small, it was just all of my adult staff. We were mm-hmm. just all out there as we grew. And if you're in an area or a stage where you're growing a little bit, you might want to recruit a security and safety team. Mm-hmm. I did that this past, maybe two years ago now. And that's been amazing. They are just on a rotating schedule and they're out there greeting, kind of watching the building as people arrive. And then another great one is if you have a couple dads or moms who would like to volunteer to direct traffic and be on your parking team, just have people out there kind of letting people know where to go. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, are there people in marked uniforms or something like that? First touch point. Yes. As they call it. And along with that, not only people, but are there signs out there that let them know a, what this is. <laughs> <laughs> so you may want to have like your ministry logo and your ministry name on a sign and where to go. Because I don't know, like with new families, especially, or if you know, your students are inviting friends, all of a sudden you show up at a church you've never been to. And there's like, it's confusing. Where do we go? Like, yeah. I know you're here somewhere, but do you guys meet in the auditorium? Do you meet in the junior high room? Do you meet in small group rooms? Are you outside somewhere to begin? Like if you have signs directing them where to go, then it's a lot less like we're just wandering aimlessly. Right. So people and signs, and then this, maybe you can check this off your list, but well lit because mm. depending on where you're at, I visited one youth group that met at this like older school and there were no lights outside <laughs> and it was so scary. And so just making sure that you're not like asking people to join you in your haunted house or something. <laughs> sure, like. I'll join your cult. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that should be a no brainer. So I'm not going to spend time on that. Another part of the staff you may want to consider also is medical staff. So that's Mm. another team that I've recruited in the past couple of years. I didn't always have it, but we just grew to the size where it was inevitable that there was going to be a kid who got hurt every night that we met. So just percentage wise. So I had a couple of moms who were RNs and they would rotate two weeks on two weeks off just to be there in their uniform, not like scrubs, but like (laughs) we had like staff, like North coast church collared shirts. They'd have an earpiece. You know, we were communicating on a radio if we needed them, but you know, little things like a kid has a stomach ache and then you don't have to deal with it. And you can just say like, go see whoever your medical staff is or Mm -hmm. big stuff. Like we've had to call parents and have them come pick them up. Yeah. One time we had to call an ambulance, like you just never know what's going to come up. And so having someone with some medical knowledge is a great asset for you and just reliability too, and right. makes parents feel like, good, you've got everything covered. You're so not- what about bare minimum? You know, if you're not, maybe not that big of a youth group or you don't have access to somebody who is an RN, what about getting your staff CPR certified? And Yeah. And I'm so trainings? glad you brought that up. So at a smaller size, I mean, I've, I've had volunteers that were like paramedics Mm. or had experience with that. So I always kind of felt good with them there. Right. But yeah, like going through a CP CPR training. I mean, this is a true story. It wasn't my, it wasn't my small group. No, I know. But (laughs) one of our students inhaled, like was asphyxiating on a guitar pick. Yeah, I remember that. He was like seventh grade, I think. And they were in small groups and he was flipping this guitar pick, like in his mouth, just like haphazardly Mm -hmm. took a breath in and it went down his windpipe and he literally could not breathe. And 
one of my small group leaders had to do the Heimlich maneuver on him and like literally saved his life. Yeah. We had another staff member choking on watermelon during a watermelon oh, eating yeah. contest and he couldn't even speak. He couldn't breathe. Luckily we had um, a medic on site and she was like on duty, ready to go right. for us. She just wasn't like, is there a doctor in the house? Like she was on <laughs> and she did the Heimlich on him, mm -hmm. saved him. So, I mean, it's crazy. Like the random happen. stuff that comes up sooner or later. We had a kid happen. pass out during a game and we had a kid fall off the stage and like slice his leg open. <laughs> so, so we're talking about safety <laughs> in your ministry. That's why I put all these teams there in place because of how awful sometimes it can get. So make sure you have a safety team, a medical team, a parking team, whatever variation of that. Those are just things to consider. You might be listening to this going, our parking is not, we don't need someone yeah. to help, but whatever you need, parents want to see people in uniforms, official like that are going to be taking care of their kids. And then when parents drop off students, they may have some questions about your ministry. A lot of parents ask me like, do you need my information? Or right. are we supposed to check this kid in? Like, because well, why? A lot of times the kids coming at a youth group night are not the same kids coming a Sunday morning. Right. And yeah. it's, it's their first time. Then where, who is this? You, know, you have one of your, this is, this is our youth groups called the flood or thrive or whatever. What does that even mean? Exactly. So who yeah, are having... you guys? And it's really a good discipline. Like as the youth pastor, like I know we want to be where the kids are. Like we want to be playing the video games, playing Gaga ball. Right. And that's so tempting, but I kind of stationed myself in our front foyer hallway where there is a cafe. So I get to hang out with kids too, but I just kind of pace around and talk by our info table and at least meet one new parent every single mm -hmm. week that comes in. And right when they walk in, I'm there to shake their hand. Hey, how are you? I'm the youth pastor. Oh, oh. And you can just see the relief that it's not like, oh, are you just some weird adult? Like, who are you? <laughs> You know, and then well, you, you are some weird adults, but you're also <laughs> the youth pastor. You think of me as an adult. That's so sweet. <laughs> so, Sometimes. and then when they come in, you want to have information ready to hand them. Yeah. So you are there. And if it cannot be you, then make it a staff member. There needs to be some, like I have a couple volunteers that are like, make very good impressions on parents. Mm -hmm. And so if I can't be there, I say, Heidi, Jesse, can you be right. right here? And if a parent comes in, talk to them. If you need me, just, they have radios. I'm like, just call me, I'll come. But, and then I always have something to hand the parent that has my contact information on it. So I print out calendars just so that I can hand them to people. We have it all online, you know, but I just like to be able to say, Hey, this is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, we have services for your whole family. Also look down here. If you ever need, if you have a question or anything, my contact information's at the bottom of this. And so I make sure they are, have, they have that before they leave. And then another element of safety is always extending an invitation to observe to that parent. Oh, yeah. So don't, so you're not hiding exactly. anything. And I know that could raise some safety concerns for like youth pastors. Like, well, who are you? We haven't had a background check right. on this parent. You know, I get it. Like a lot of schools are doing closed campuses now, but I mean, there's so many adults. We're all watching. I mean, we're all in a big room. Do what you feel comfortable with. Right. But I feel like as a parent, for the first time dropping my kid off, like when I take her to VBS at a church that I've never been to, yeah. I'm like, I'm not just piecing out. I want to see like who these <laughs> wackos are like leading this thing. <laughs> so I will stand in the back and just kind of watch the vibe and watch the other kids. And so always and to see how your kids acclimating. Are they talking totally. to people? Do they know anybody? And most junior hires are mortified. They're like, get the <laughs> heck out of this youth group. I'm going to die. So most parents do leave because yeah. they know their kid doesn't want them there. Sad. But <laughs> I always extend the invitation. I always say, hey, like, feel free to stay and observe as long as you want. We're going to get started in about five minutes. We meet in there or, you know, I'd be happy to give you a tour, have a leader give you a tour or whatever. So, you know, just be very welcoming and let them know, like, you are welcome here, too. We're mm -hmm. not just like, you want to sign your kid in? Okay, great. Bye. We'll see you at nine o'clock. That's right. when we end. Like, it's just like, no, like, this is a, we're ministering to your whole family. You are welcome here. And then another big safety thing with parents is, and this, we kind of touched on it before, but just thinking of the end of the night, most youth group nights are on a school night. And mm -hmm. so they're ready to like, let's get out of here. So with safety, a very organized and smooth pickup system. So can they find their student after group? Like, 
where where are they? Are they still in their small group room? Are they here? Like right. getting students available for parents to pick up on time, ending your program on time. That makes a parent feel safe because it shows that you're organized and you're respectful and you run a tight ship and parents like to see that like, okay, this isn't just some free for all. There's a program and organization here that goes a very long way with parents. Um, so pick up that is their, if pick up is sloppy and a mess, they're, if their kids like, I want to go to youth group, they, they might say no, right. like you got to make it easy and convenient for them. Cause that might be their only impression. Drop off, pick up. That's yep. it. If you blow it on exactly. both of those, you're done. Well, so. I'm glad you brought that up because some parents don't even get out of the car right. and you'll never meet them. But their impression is, are there friendly people in the parking lot? Was there clear signage? Did I know where to go? Was it smooth? Was it quick? Mm -hmm. You know, was there someone available to help me if I needed it? And all those things, they're not just like minute details, you mm -hmm. know, they're, you're branding your ministry. And like, people always say like, Oh, we want to brand our ministry as this or that. It's like, well, even the things you do in the parking lot are branding it to parents and they're a big asset. Hmm. So, and then parents, the other thing, like on the like behavioral side, I think parents really want to know that you're going to handle misbehavior mm -hmm. or inappropriateness or any form of bullying or um, any s other students who are unsafe, they want to know that you're going to handle that really well because kids are going to go home and the version they tell their parents right. of what happened between them and another student. I mean, I can't tell you how many phone calls I get. Like, well, a kid in a small group just ripped his AirPods right off him and stole them. I'm like, <laughs> That probably didn't happen, but something <laughs> happened, you right. know, or no, they just snapped a skateboard in half. They just snapped it right in half in front of them and then laughed at him. Like, I don't think so, <laughs> but okay. So just taking all those concerns very seriously. And if there's ever any inappropriate behavior that you handle it and don't sweep it under the rug. If you act like it was no big deal and like, Oh, well, kids will be kids. Right. But even when I get these outlandish accusations that I'm like, I know that didn't happen. I call every parent. I do an investigation. Yeah. I talk to the students. If there's discipline necessary, I will. Like I've asked students, okay, like you're going to take a break for a week and then you can come back because we don't treat people that way and I'm not going to allow it, mm -hmm. you know, stuff like that. But parents want to know we're not just like, oh, well, you know, these crazy kids, right. but that we do have a system of discipline. So that's going to look differently for everybody. So I'm not going to go into that, but just make sure that parents know like, hey, I have your kids back if something goes down. And then always call parents if their child gets hurt. Don't wait for the parent to pick them up to say, hey, she like bonked her head and like there's a huge <laughs> goose egg on it. And she might want to take her to the hospital. She says she's dizzy, but I don't know. Like usually if a kid feels sick, if a kid gets hurt, if a kid is crying about anything, unless it's like, hey, they're spilling their guts. But I mean like something <laughs> like literally spilling their yeah guts. like barfing in the bathroom like i always call the parents say hey i just want to let you know so and so got hurt right i think they're okay but you know if you want to talk to them and make the call whether they're going to stay or go that's up to you um unless they're obviously really sick but i don't like parents to just show up and their kids a disaster and they're like what happened in the last <laughs> two hours like my goodness we have a saying at north coast no surprises yeah and that goes for our staff but i think that's a parent thing too like do not surprise parents with like an emotionally or physically beat up kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not a good way to pick them up. <laughs> and then lastly, one thing that makes parents feel safe um, is just clear communication, you know, make sure that they are in the loop. And we've mm. done, I think some stuff on this yeah. in previous episodes, but just really want to hit hard on that is, Everything you do is transparent. Mm -hmm. They know exactly what you're going to do, how you're going to do it, when you're going to do it. They know what to bring. They know what time to be there. They know how to succeed. And believe it or not, that creates a safe environment That because it creates trust. Mm -hmm. And the transparency of your ministry. I think we did that in things youth pastors need to stop doing. Okay. One, I don't know if it was a one was and two. Episode. Yeah. And it was just in regards to poor communication with the parents. Yeah. So you always need to be on top of that. Yeah. Okay. So let's move on to students. So students <laughs> health. Sorry. It was like a burp pickup. I don't know. <laughs> a burp up. 
So students, the way that they perceive safety is obviously different than parents. They're not like, well, where's the medical team? (laughs) I'm not going to this janky youth group. (laughs) But they're, you know, like a number one need for a student, new or old, when they walk in the door, what do they want, Jeff? Quiz. Um, What do they want? People to not look at them and judge them, probably. (laughs) True. And Which is a form of, oh, yes, they do want candy. (laughs) I forgot about that. That makes them feel cared for. Um, But that's a form of- Emotional safety, I would probably say. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like, I feel like every student that walks in the door, it's like, do you see me? You know? And like, some students, the way that they want love, it's hard to give because it's like- you're so quiet and like, mm. you don't give a lot and you're super shy or like, you're just crazy and disrespectful. Like, but every single student in their own way wants love and wants to be seen. And that's, mm-hmm. I feel like the number one need when they walk. I think that's door. important though, in their own way, because I'm thinking back to me and I was pretty wild, I guess, in, in junior high specifically, but I was also the one who I kind of wanted to ease into a situation like I didn't want to walk in the right. door and have overwhelm people, them. yeah, or, or have people overwhelm me, right? Is what I'm saying. Well, I mean, like, yeah, overwhelm, or, okay, them, I got the you. Students. I wanted to kind of ease in, and then gradually my psycho self would come out, you know, as I felt comfortable, <laughs> right? So, I guess that's this, it's what you're saying, but yeah, everybody is different, in right? How they... Because I think sometimes, and I'm guilty of this, I have a tendency of a student who comes in and they're all like, good, fine know that I'm like, okay, guess you don't want to be friends. Bye. Mm-hmm. You know, but I'm like, no, they do want love. I just have to figure out their love, love language. language, candy. It's, it's always candy. candy. You know, they just want love and that's what makes them feel safe. Students want to be seen mm-hmm. and whether they show it or not, like they want acknowledgement. I always say like when I get home from church, I always tell Jeff, like students are just like, hi, here I am. (laughs) And I'm like, Oh, uh, Hey, so how was your weekend? You know, they just are so like, here I am. See me, love me, want me. And that's what they want from us and from our staff. It's like, we see you, you're not invisible. And that's why small group ministry is huge is because it, you can't get invisible like, Mm -hmm. you know, in these larger groups. So they want to be seen and they want to know that they can open up and be vulnerable when they're ready. Mm -hmm. And so by the, that, you know, we show it and how vulnerable and open we are. We kind of set the tone for like, can we be honest here or not? And then the way we respond when people are open and honest, like how we treat them, like sometimes I'll have a kid raise their hand and like, kind of say something like, whoa, like during a message, yeah. even in front of everyone. And like, no matter how I feel on the inside of what they just shared, like sometimes I'll have kids share like a really like intense struggle. And I'm like, Whoa, you feel really safe here. But I like affirm it. Like, yeah, guy, like so many of us have felt that way. Like I know, you know, and I just like act like it's totally normal to be open and honest because I don't want them to think, Oh, this is like the be good club. We all come and we like pretend we're actually good people, but you know, but that we're all broken and Mm -hmm. let them bring their brokenness. And so they watch and they pay attention to like, is my brokenness okay here? And you and it takes some students more time than others but maybe especially in their small group just wanting a place to be vulnerable and then you know kind of along the same lines of the parents i always want students to know like i will absolutely not tolerate you being unkind to another student Mm -hmm. i think we've talked before about like i don't allow them to be disrespectful to my leaders but if they're unkind to another student, like they will regret it, Mm -hmm. you know? And I've pulled kids out before, even siblings talking to each other, (laughs) like jerks, pulling, pulling them out during worship or just like, no, we're, we're stopping this right here. And that creates a safe environment for everyone to watch. Like we don't allow anyone to be unkind, anyone to be a jerk, anyone to be a bully. And depending on the severity of it, you know, like, I've sent kids home like, Mm -hmm. nope, not, not today. You're not going to, you know, rain on our parade. You know, (laughs) you can come back another time because I have a rule. I don't protect a bully. Yeah. I will protect the victim all day long, go to bat for them. But the bully, it's like, nope, got, I mean, got, I have forgiveness and grace and Mm -hmm. let's restore and disciple you through it, but I'm not going to allow 
that kind of abuse to anybody. So making sure kids know that. And then kids really want soul care, you know, and that's why they're coming to us. So like beyond the love, what makes a student feel safe is knowing that their soul is going to be cared for. And how do we do that? We protect their small group, you know, like of being a time of like sacred time. Like, you know, this is what we're going to use it for. So if other students are being disruptive, you know, they might need to try again in a few minutes, you know, take a little break. Cause we need to protect that time, you mm-hmm. know, of like, Hey, this is what this time is for. You come here for soul care and we're going to let you have it. We're not going to let one person ruin the whole group and guys. Oh my gosh. Like I have seen students get discouraged by that more than anything else. Like totally. one person ruining the whole small group, like thinking they're so funny and yeah, let's have fun. But then about five minutes in, let's pray and let's switch gears. Mm-hmm. You know, we need time to like, let's talk and get our high fives and wiggles out and right. fart jokes out. Like let's <laughs> get it all out. Let's pray. And let's those transition. girls are wild, <laughs> but you know, like I've had so many students over the years come to me just so like, downcast like yeah. oh like so and so in my small group we don't get anything done and i brought right. my bible and i was ready and i really wanted to learn and i wanted to talk about the message and it's like ugh, and we can't yeah. even give you that like that sucks you know that you come here all ready to like bible study right. and as leaders we're allowing someone to drag that through the mud and yeah, you know they're gonna love the game well you hope they're gonna love the game They're going to love the fellowship, just hanging out with their friends. And you want them to love that time of small group when they can connect with each other. And if that's not safe, that ruins the entire night, really. And that's a really common scenario. So in that case, you know, I tell my small group leaders, send them out to me. I think I've told you guys before, I don't lead a small group for that reason. So that I'm available for those kids to come out and it happens every single week. So I'm glad I'm out there to support them. But Sometimes it's gotten to the point where I've just had to keep a kid with me the entire time. And like, I'll talk to them like, Hey, what's going on in your life? And I'll try to do like our discussion sheet with Mm. them. But yeah, we just really have to protect, like kind of have a flock mentality in that sense, not the sheep mentality Mm. or like, well, they need to be in there too. It's like, well, they've gotten their chance. And if they can't get it together, then they can try again another time. But we have to protect that time for students to feel safe spiritually. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of, I think pastors fall more on the like softy side and they don't really want to like do anything about it, but we're just, I don't know. I I feel like it's kind of that like pearls before swine Mm -hmm. kind of vibe if we let that happen. So we have to be hard. You talk about the flock mentality and, and sheep and pastors being a shepherd of the flock. Sometimes you will have a wolf amongst your sheep. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a hard, that's probably a discussion for a different day. But a lot of times there'll be those kids there and you all probably have had that kid come in your ministry where it's like, you really are not here for any good reason. Now you're not going to tell them to not come. You hope that you'll eventually break through. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Break through to them. But when they start bringing your ministry down or other right. kids down, and which I then thought of your talking about down. that tonight, and I think you're right, that is another talk for another time because that is a soul wrenching decision. Right. When you have that kid and you're like, we're going to reach you, right. but it's like, and they're clawing the walls down with them. You're like, wait, but you're ruining everything. Right. And so we could talk about that another time. But yeah, like just for tonight, it's like, we really have to protect those small groups from that. And the small group leader, that's not their job either. You know, like we, they have enough going on. Exactly. (laughs) If they're discouraged each week, like, Oh, so-and-so again, like ruin the whole group. Couldn't get them to listen to If they don't have the support of like, send them to me, I'll deal with them. Then, then, they're going to burn out, you know, and it's mm. discouraging because small group leaders are also excited to be like, we had a breakthrough and we were right. vulnerable and shared and kids grew and learned and asked great questions. Like that's what they live for. Like the small group time is like their time yeah. to be the pastor. And if someone just like wrecks it all, mm. we're, we're really letting them down. So, and then lastly, before we move to leaders, Students want to be included and encouraged. And some kids just need that extra like, hey, you belong here. And Mm -hmm. I think that's that's what we really want them to see is like I had a student. He hated playing games. It was like really uncomfortable for him. So I'd get him a clipboard and a pen and I'd be like, you're like our official scorekeeper, you know, (laughs) (laughs) or like 
just finding ways that students can be involved mm. and engaged because they all need to be included and encouraged to be included. So leaders, we did a whole episode on like our volunteers mm. and living and dying by them and some best practices with them. But how do, how does a leader feel safe? Like, I feel like that's almost like a weird, like my leaders are adults. <laughs> They're fine. They don't feel unsafe, but by safe, what I mean for them is that they have support and they have everything they need to succeed. Mm. Like those are the kinds of things it's just stuff that they don't have to carry the mental weight of. And one is kind of like, Hey, we have their support, the support of, we won't let students mistreat you, mm -hmm. but that they want to know that we have a plan and that they are able to have input in that plan and that we share that plan with them. So like making sure they are 100% resource, like, a big mistake I made early on was giving my leaders the discussion sheet the day before mm -hmm. or the day of our program and expecting them to come and be like prepared to lead a small right. group. And it's like, well, they've been at work all day yeah. and they're like, then they go home, have dinner real quick and come they're like, when are they going to prepare? So I've had to be, be really disciplined to send those discussion sheets out on Thursday. So they, they have the whole weekend and mm -hmm. then programs on Tuesday, but that means I have to be ahead. Yeah. Um, but making sure I'm setting them up for success. Another big mistake I made early on with not make, not having them get what they needed was I wasn't giving them enough time in small groups. I was mm. like really loose on our schedule and letting like worship just keep going and the game keep going. And it's like, yeah, small groups. Yeah. Right. We'll get there eventually not realizing like by the time they get in and settle the kids down and take attendance and then like get into it. Like I, then there'd be like Kristen, like it's pickup right. and I'd be like, Oh, okay. Next week I'm going to give you guys more time. I'm going to get, but it was my fault because I wasn't being tight enough on the front end of our schedule to give them what they needed at the end. And I felt like that was really disrespectful of me. So I had to really change that. And, and you need to kind of work into being open to share because yeah, you've probably gone from a lot of highs of games and maybe the message impact you or whatever, but then kind of coming in and then you're going to be talking for a little bit and you know, and, and you kind of right. need to read that like transition to, takes time. And then when that finally happens, time's up, right. Gotta go. Right. And then, you know, I was thinking too, like my leaders, especially like, I feel like they really want to have roles outside of being a small group leader too. So handing away stuff that they can lead or do. If you're looking for like some of mine, like their favorite thing is to do the parking at the end of the night, mm -hmm. you know, like I use them in that way, or they love leading a game or they love emceeing. Like they want to have the support of like, Hey, you really do see me as a vital part. You use me like a staff member. Mm -hmm. And I also lead a small group, but my leaders really want to be hands-on from the beginning to the end. And I feel like that is, I know that sounds weird to put that in like a safety episode, but I just feel like that is contributing to their success. Mm -hmm. And so I guess it's a little bit of like, loose, you know, definition, but, and then lastly, just that they know that you are a safe person to bring concerns to maybe personal issues to problems to, and that you are going to walk alongside them in those things, mm -hmm. you know, because ministry and relationships, they're all tied up. It's like, where does the personal end and the minute, like it's right. all together. And so, yeah, some of like the best nights I've had with my leaders, it wasn't even about the students. It was about them, mm -hmm. you know, like they were going through a really hard time in their family or with their relationships or with work. And we could just talk about it. And, and you yeah. need to know those things and yeah. not just be very superficial. All right, you're here, go do what you got to do. And at the end of the night, see ya. Right. Or it's a ministry within a ministry. For you sure. You need to know those people and what, you know, maybe they need a break. And if you don't know anything that's going on in their yeah. life and you're asking them to do all this stuff, it's like, you know, there's something heavy on their heart. Maybe they shouldn't even be there that night. Yeah. And you know, I've said that to my leaders too. Like if you ever need a break, if you ever have a night where you're like, I just, I'm like, I know life happens. So mm -hmm. feel free, like just really caring for their soul and for their well being, and, you know, nurturing them of like, Hey, I'm for you. Mm -hmm. Like you're for the kids and I'm for you. 
And, um, I hope that comes across with my leaders. I feel like we do a good job of that, but just connecting with every single one of them to know like, Hey, like I see you and I see you as more than like a resource. Yeah. Like, Oh, we need someone to fill this position. There you go. You know, but if they ever have concerns, like taking those seriously too and seeing it to the end. Cause I think sometimes we just want to listen and be like, yeah, well, let me know. Like, how does it, right. how does, how does it go? Or how did it go? But like, like engaging in the problem with right. them. Being like, there through it. Right. Oh yeah. Didn't you mention something about like you had cancer a couple months ago? <laughs> like how did that, how's that working out for you? Or even like just with like a student, like, you know, I had a small group that was uh, really yeah. struggling and, I said, okay, well, here's a few ideas of what I think we could try. And can I come? Like, I'll be a part of it too. And I'll even lead it. If you kind of want to take a back seat for a change, Mm -hmm. like, where do you want me? What do you want me to do? Like, I'm just sort of like on the sidelines, like you want me in, you want, (laughs) it's time to go in and you meet you. (laughs) And really, I just, am like, I'm at your disposal. Like I am there for you. Like I will let you six or help you succeed. I will allow you (laughs) to succeed only when I choose when I have a huge ego. So (laughs) yeah, so that's kind of it. And again, these are probably things that might've been no brainers for some of you and might've been like, Whoa, like I should put some more time and attention. Mm. But as we reopen after this COVID thing, like I think these are the areas to give some of that time and attention to of just like how tight is our ship running? Mm -hmm. What is the appearance of it? And are we a place and a person that can be trusted with what has been given to us? And are we taking extra good care of that dotting every I crossing every T and letting people know like we are here for your physical, spiritual, and social safety. Awesome. Well, thanks again for tuning in guys. And we will see you next time. Thanks for checking out this episode. We hope that it provided a ton of insight for you to create health in yourself, your ministry and your church. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the ministry coach podcast, wherever you're watching or listening. And it would mean so much to us if you would rate and review this show on Apple podcasts. And we'd also encourage you to share it with a friend so that it can go to help more people. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.